have your seats and um, congratulate yourself. It's a beautiful day to be alive. Hallelujah. I say you should congratulate yourselves now because it's a beautiful day to be alive. Yes, it's a beautiful day to be alive. Hallelujah. Uh, this morning, I don't feel adequate enough, but I depend on the Holy Spirit to help me through this teaching. I want to thank the pastor for this opportunity he has given to me to minister this morning. Thank you, sir. And the ministers, I really want to say a big thank you. And I want to tell you something is happening in the Life Center Church. How many of you have been here on Wednesdays? Oh, if you have not been here on Wednesdays, you are missing. You are missing. If you have not been here, please, just tell somebody that you have not been seeing that the person is missing. Oh. You have to come on Wednesday. Pastor started a series with us on Wednesday, the beginning of prosperity. And this is just the best time to listen to that type of message. And in the coming Wednesday, it's going to be deliverance. Hallelujah. And that is going to be the 49th day of fasting. I, I thought somebody will clap. I've been mean, to fast for 100 days. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that is a beautiful time to wait upon the Lord and come on Wednesday. And come and see that indeed the Lord is good. Hallelujah. So this morning I'll be talking about life. The life. The life. This is the Life Center Church. And in the Life Center Church, it is assumed that we have life. And if we have life, what are the things that people must see in us to show that we have life? Remember, we are in times of uncertainty all over the world. So many things are happening. And people are looking for deliverers. People are looking for savior. They are thinking, who will save us? Everything is going a wire. There's inflation here. There's uprising there. Things are happening around. But there's something in the scriptures. Obadiah 121. He says something. He says, and saviors. Some version says, deliverers shall come on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Hallelujah. In the last days, some version says deliverance shall come from where? Zion. No wonder the Bible says you are the light of the world. When they say, behold, darkness shall cover the nation. Gross darkness. What? The people. But what will happen? The light of the Lord will do what? Shine upon you. You are the light. You are the hope. You are the one the world is waiting for. It says in the book of Isaiah 2 verse 3. It said many shall go and say, Come ye, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. To the house of the God of Jacob. People are looking for help. A lot of help. Things that you cannot imagine happening in some people's lives, not just financially. And where will they come to? Who will they look up to? You are the salt of the earth. You cannot afford to be in the same level as the people that are looking up to you. And that is why we want to look at the life that is in us. They are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of, of God. The world is waiting. You have the capacity, but we are going to check it this morning. And I will start to teach from the known to the unknown. I'm sure many of us did biology when we were in school. In fact, now is when I got to know that biology is no longer compulsory. 
during our time, I'm not that old, though. Don't look at me as I'm saying during, I'm, I'm not that old. But just a few years back, biology was compulsory. And everybody knows characteristics of what? And who can say it? Exactly. Mr. Niger D. That is what we are going to look at this morning. If you have the life of God in you, as we see in the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 to 15, he said, when you were dead in your sins and in the circumcision of your, of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins and he has canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness. We should stand against us. He has taken it away. He has nailed it on the cross. What does Ephesians say? Ephesians says, Ephesians chapter 2, still talking about the life from verse 4. He says, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ, and he has raised us up together. If you know where you are seated, you are seated with Christ Jesus far above principalities, far above powers. That is your position in case you don't know. So if you are seated with Jesus, if you are in a kingdom, you are alive, what is expected of you? Because the world is looking to the church. The, and the church is you. And myself, they are wondering, all this happening, how can I get solution? And they are looking to you. They are looking to me. And we say we have life. If we say we have life, then the first character we must possess is movement. We must move. There was a time there's that slogan, we move. If you are alive, you must move. It's either you are moving from one place to the other, or your body, if somebody is dead, the first thing the doctor will check is the, whether the heartbeat is moving, the pulse rate. If a doctor is not there, somebody will raise the hand and drop it and say, this one is not moving. Are you moving? And when we say movement, when God created man, movement is synonymous to life. You must always move. Move mentally. Move physically. There are so many people that are weighed down. They are depressed. The only thing that can get you out of it is physical movement. Move. Acts 17 verse 28, it says, In him we live. In him we move. We must move. And if we look at the book of uh, Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, when God told Joshua that they had to do what? Move. Go. I'm not saying everybody should jack out. That's not what I'm saying. But if God is asking you to move, move. Your body has to be in movement for you to be alive. Your mouth needs you to move to pray. Your eyelids need you to move. Your hands need to move. Your leg needs to move. For how long will you stay stagnant? You are born again. You are still in the same level. You have to move. And what kind of movement did the Bible say? It said, move what? Forward. That's the only type of movement I'll talk about today. You move forward. And to move forward is that we make progress. And I would like us to look at the book of Genesis 26 from verse 1. In Genesis 26 from verse 1, it says there was Famine in the land. Beside the first famine. So there was famine. And 
God spoke to Isaac in verse 2. And some, he faced some obstacles. But when we go to verse 12, the Bible said, Isaac sold. You know, we normally say this a lot when we give offering. But what sowing means is that Isaac woke up with all his people. They went to a farm. They actually did the work. They did not say because there is farming, let us sit back. They were not speculators. They were doing something. Isaac moved. He sold in that same land. And God blessed the works of his hands. God will be giving you ideas. God will be, in fact, this is the time, the best time to be, to prosper. Because God wants to showcase the church. He knows people are looking for solution. He says, saviors will come from Mount Zion. He didn't say savior. If he says savior, he said, ah, Jesus has come. Saviors. You will be saving children in school. You will be saving people that are going bankrupt. You will be saving people that cannot have children. Doctors, experts, genius. They will come from Zion. Not mediocres. You have to put in the work. Make progress. Move forward. Be open-minded. Because God will speak to you. And you have to move. Something in you has to move. Not conventional, but legal. God will begin to tell you things to do. And you are not limited by age. Move. Tell somebody, move. I will stop at where the time stops me. But we move in him and we move forward. We move in him. We are not moving aimlessly. We move in Christ. We take instruction. And let me tell you something. When God gives you dreams, there are things you cannot achieve by yourself. I don't know if it's only me. There are things that you sit down and say, how can I do this? Now how is this possible? Move in him. Move forward. And if the idea is big, trust God to help you through. This morning our pastor was talking about our daddy Gio. He said he has never seen anyone that is overdue. In everything, in his plan, it is big. Don't limit yourself. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is big. Why are you caging yourself? If God, and when God blessed Isaac, God spoke to him. Don't go to Egypt for help. This is what you do. He went to so. The Bible said he was great. He was exceedingly great. I want to believe he's for lack of words. To express the greatness. Move forward. Please tell your neighbor, move forward. Abraham too moved from his location. God said, leave your kindred. Move to a land. And he moved. Isaac was not sleeping in famine. He was not complaining. He went out to work. And God blessed the work of his hands. I pray for so many people this morning. As many that are under the sound of my voice. The Lord will begin to give you new, new level of understanding. Ideas that will save nations. God will give you, God will give your children. It will be a generational thing. In the name of Jesus. I used to tell my teenagers, I said, who says that the best in sight cannot come from our class? In the whole of the world. It can come now. Best in Waek. Best in Jam. I said, if any one of you can achieve it, people will come here. People, I don't want to say they are tired of hearing the word of God. They want to see, and we are the ones that we show them. Saviors will come on Zion. 
to bring deliverance. The second thing, if you are living, is that you are breathing. Everybody breathing. Breathing. Out. Ah, you don't know how to do it in children's church. We know how to breathe. Though. Can we go again? I want to stand up to breathe. Okay. In. 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 Out. That's how we do it. If you are alive, you must be breathing. If you are alive, you must be breathing. And what do you take in? The Holy Spirit. In this time, in this dispensation, you cannot be caught not having the Holy Spirit in you. It's wicked out there. Oh, maybe I have not seen stories of children using their mothers. You need the Holy Spirit. And what? God breathes his Holy Spirit inside of us. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. If you look at John 14, 17, the Holy Spirit teaches us you do things unconventionally and you become a millionaire. I said unconventional but legal. God puts an idea through the Holy Spirit. And it's like, wow. Everybody connects through social media. Just a boy. Oh, I want to, I, I know some of you say, but he's not born again. But God gave him uncommon wisdom. He wrote some uh, apps, software. I think I've told this story before. During COVID, two boys, two boys from Lagos, they wrote their own, their own app, payment application, and it was bought by Paystack in billions of Naira, millions of dollars. So if that boy is in our church now, no, just look at the next person to you. See if that boy is in our church now. So what will happen now? So who says it cannot be you? Who says it cannot be your children? Who says? He has given you a sound mind. The Holy Spirit must always abide in you. You breathe in the Holy Spirit. Don't limit yourself. People, some people say, but um, I'm a housewife. I just sit at home. Some people sit at home. They come up with solutions that will save the world. From Mount Zion, saviors will arise. The Holy Spirit in verse 26, it teaches us all things. It brings to the remembrance of all things. You will not have dementia in Jesus' name. As many that are, and this time I'm praying, as many that are going through that situation and say, I just forget. The hand of the Lord is touching your brain right now. And you get uncommon memory. In the name of Jesus. I speak life. The Holy Spirit convicts of sin. Righteousness and judgment. The Holy Spirit guides us in all truth. Breathing. Let the Spirit of God come upon you. And He will give you speed like never before. You will mount up with wings like eagles. You will run, you will not be weary. You will even walk, you will not faint. Hallelujah. Just breathe your name upon me.
Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Your name is your name. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. You need the Holy Spirit at a time like this. If you have not been baptized by the Holy Spirit, you can wait after the service. So ministers will minister to you. The Bible said the apostle, they breathe upon them and they receive the Holy Spirit. That's the best. That is what stands us out. That is why we are sought out. The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And what do you breathe out? You cast out your worries. You cast out your anxiety. The people of the world cannot be worried and you are worried. How can you help? The people of the world cannot be complaining, you are complaining. How can you help? They are looking for help. They are looking for you. Cast all your cares. I want us to have a solution mentality. I want us to tell yourself, I'm a savior. I'm a savior. I'm a savior. Don't come looking for what can be done. Say, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. God has blessed you. He said everything that, to, that pertains to life and godliness, he has given you. God is not in a hurry in heaven creating a big miracle because of you. He has given you. You just need to pray that we open your eyes to see it. It's there. Breathe out your anxiety. Your worries. Say, casting all your cares on him. Why? He cares. But do you know what we do? We carry our anxiety. We carry our cares. We take it to him. We are struggling with him. We don't want to drop it. You carry it there. We say, let us pray. Say, God, my child, my this. You take it. When you are going, you carry it again. Leave it. Give him. Cast it all on him. Say, God, I have given you. I know I will not be put to shame. Concerning this matter, I have handed this child over to you. What can I do? Except what you asked me to do. But on this issue, I have cast, this is my fear. These are my worries. These are my anxieties. Some people don't have money in their account right now. So what is she saying? Cast it on him. Say, God, I have come to you. You say we supply our needs according to your... You said it, oh. I have held God by that word before. You said it. Hey, hey, God, you said it. And this is my need. And God did it. But you drop it, you carry it, you are struggling with those anxieties and worries. You don't want to drop it. You want to live in self-pity. So everybody will say, what is wrong? The third one is nutrition. I told you, I will just stop where the time stops me. For you to be alive, and I just remember something about walking, about movement. God is saying to someone, your ailment is because you are not walking. Walking. So begin to walk. Take walks. That is just the solution to your problem. I don't know who that is for. It's to start walking. Take time very early in the morning and take walks. He said, all that... Um, thing you are taking as medication. That is not the solution. Just start working. Just start working. You know yourself. And your healing will come speedily in Jesus' name. Nutrition. What do you take in? 
Remember, we are supposed to do Mr. Nijadi. We have done movement. We have done respiration. Now we are talking about nutrition. You have life in you. If you have life in you, you are supposed to be feeding on something. Some of you feed on negativity. Some of you feed on gossips. What do you feed on? People want to come and meet you for help. You need to have stamina. If you don't eat well, you cannot stand well. You cannot face the world that is ahead of you. You cannot bring solution. What are you eating? Ask your neighbor. What are you feeding your children? Are you feeding them the word of God? Are you taking the word of God? Let us look at 1 Peter 2 verse 2. says like newborn babe you should desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby you must desire the word of God how can you be born again and you don't desire the word of God are you alive if you are alive you will desire it you will listen to messages. Your spirit man will yearn. Say, bless that those, that thirst, that hunger. After righteousness, and they shall be filled. Do you hunger after the word of God? After the things of God? Do you desire the word of God on your own? Do you listen to messages? Do you listen to spiritual songs? And it goes further if we go to Hebrews 4. Because even in diet, in spiritual diet, there are stages. You will not drink milk forever. After milk, you start taking what? Solid food. If somebody, you give birth to a child, and at 4, 5, the child is still taking milk, you get worried. Something is wrong. Now imagine, the child never takes solid. Till 18 years old, 20 years old. Ah. But some of us, we have been born again for 10 years, for 20 years. It is still the milk of the word we are taking. We cannot take a strong teaching. When you hear a strong teaching, you say, I'm leaving the church. I'm leaving. It's me they are talking to. I'm not doing it again. You cannot stand the depth of the word of God. Let us look at Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 14. He said, but strong meat, in some version he said, solid food belong to them that are of full age. Those who by reason of use their senses exercise to discern both good and evil. Solid food. Come for Wednesday. Solid food is being served. Solid food. You cannot take milk forever. If you take milk forever or for life, there will be stunted growth. And the one that has stunted growth is a burden to people. Not a blessing. A burden. When you are in a group, you will be the minus one. Everybody will be thinking of a way to get you out. Because you cannot take solid food. You are not taking solid food. You are not growing. My time is almost up. I have a lot I would have loved to say. Remember, we are just on nutrition. In the book of 1 Timothy, it says, Study to show yourself approved unto God. It says, My people are destroyed for lack of... Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. It's in the Bible. 
You need to dig deep. You need to know God. You need to know his word. Because when people are running to meet the saviors, will you be able to help them? Or you will be a burden to a dying world. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The word of God is the food for life. Every other trait as human or as living is dependent on this trait. Yoruba people will say, You don't have anything inside of you, no stamina, you cannot go far. It is life is nutrition. People that are not eating well, they have what? Kwashoko. And they, it leads to what? Death. If you are not eating the spiritual food well, you are not hearing the word of God, you are not growing, you become stunted in growth. And it leads to spiritual what? Death. And you will be among us, but you become a burden for us. Ask your neighbor, what are you eating? Ask them now. Some people feed on negative news. There are some things, when I'm scrolling, I see them, I don't want to see, I don't want to know. It's none of my business. I don't want to. Somebody sends something to you. They said, uh, what is, be careful of the content. You, they have told you. You still want to see the content. For what? And then they will send pornography. They have told you. If you tell me to be careful of the content, then it's none of my business. I don't want to see it. I don't want to sleep at night and be hearing some things. They say they kill people. They say be careful of the next page. The content is graphic because they will show you head apart, leg apart. You want to watch it. Then in the night, some aunt is chasing you. Only one leg is chasing you. That is what you are feeding yourself with. You are battling with spirit husband, spirit wife. How will you know about when it is pornography you are watching? They will come and meet you now. You have opened a way. You, a savior. How will you help others? Growth, I think I will end. Okay, let us go to I. I, I pray that I'll be able to finish growth and I'll just end there. Because this part is very important. This morning when we're praying as ministers, it was raised again and again. And I was wondering, irritability, the way we respond to changes in our environment, how sensitive are we? Galatians 6, 2 says, we should bear with one another. First Corinthians 13, verse 5, it said, love is not, is, is not easily irritated. How do you show empathy? Empathy is bearing with one another. You cannot have the life of Christ in you and people around you are going through something and it is none of your business. You don't check up on people. You don't care about how they look. You just come in, you see somebody crying by your side. You say, it's none of my business. Everybody is holding their heads. You don't weep for a cry or for a dying world. If you know what is happening to young people, to teenagers, you will not just sit like this. We heard a story yesterday in this Abuja. A young girl was lured to Hilton. And from there, they blindfolded her. They took her to somewhere and they were using her as a sex slave. I think for four years or thereabouts. Then she started praying for a way of escape. She prayed and prayed until the madam said, I don't have views of you. And when they say, I don't have views of you, it is to kill the person, remove the organ in this Abuja. 
and you are not moved. No empathy. Nothing moves you. Your heart is strong like Olumo rock. Nothing they can preach. It will not move you. Love is not easily irritated. And this morning we prayed about something. Offense. Matthew 18 verse 7. He says, Offense will always come. He says, Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must need to be that offense come. That is, offense will always come. He said, But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Offense will always come. But don't be the one that initiates offense. You know this person does not like it. And you keep doing it. So it's not my business. I even want her to get angry. Do you have life in you? You don't care. Tell me, I will say my mind. Do you know that some Christians will even tell you, me, I'm not nice, oh. Ah. If you, that the world wants to come for help, you are not nice. So I'm not, ah. I'm not nice. I say it as it is. Anybody that wants, ah. See, offense will come, but woe unto the person that brings the offense. And when offense comes, when people step on your toes, they step on your ego, what do you do as children of God? Forgive. Please, I'm using this opportunity to beg. If we have offended you in this church, please, let your forgive. Let it go. Because if you don't let it go, it will cause sickness in your body. You will be taking poison and you want somebody else to die. Unforgiveness is poison. And I think I'll stop here. Still have more? But let me just stop here. I still have growth must grow in grace, grow in praise, grow in the knowledge of God, grow in love. But there's negative growth. We know that. Even in the body. If, <laughs> if this year, you know that it's supposed to be like this. There's re re rejuvenation every time. It begins to grow. Only this year. What happens? What do you call that sickness? Now cancer. There's negative growth. When you are puffed up. When you are not growing in the you are not growing in the direction of light. You are growing puffed up. Nobody can talk to you again. It's a negative growth. And cancer kills. That kind of growth kills. No wonder the Bible says that God does what to the proud. What does God do to the proud? And he gives grace to the humble. And when you don't grow, you are powerless, you are prayerless, you become a nuisance, you become a body, you get angry, you complain. Oops. That's not a good thing. We need to grow. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I behaved like a child. But when I started growing, I did what? I put away childish heart. Eh? I was going, he did eyes like this. It's in children's church, they do that kind of thing. Adults should not be talking like that. If somebody looks at you, do eyes like this, call the person and say, ah, I hope everything is okay, ma. It's the way you are doing your eyes. I'm not saying young people, if you go and call old people, say, eh, you are on your own. They slap you. I'm talking of people of the same and if you think that somebody does not treat you well, can go to somebody who does. Every time I greet that mom, she does not answer me. I say, hey, she's not like that. So we have to grow. Put away childish acts. I will not play with you again. It's in children's church. Let's stop it. Let's grow up. Excretion, put off the old man, put off sin. Anything. 
that is not good for the body must come out. If it stays in the body, what does it cause? Death. A friend of mine in the U.S. was so ill, she couldn't go to the toilet. They had to pass a tube through her mouth to bring it out because it must come out. Sin kills. If you don't leave sin, it will kill you. Sin kills. Sin stinks. Sin destroys. The wages of sin is death. And the gift of God is what? Life. Let's rise on our feet this morning. The only one I skipped is reproduction. And I'm sure we know about our vision 2032. To populate the kingdom with 8 million people, uh, no, with 40 million people by the year 2032. You must reproduce. You are not barren. Touch your stomach. Say, I am not barren. You must bring forth your like. The problem of leadership in this part of the world is we don't replicate our kind. You have been born again. Who can you say that? I'm not dead. This person will do it well. I have poured myself on this person. Who are you discipling? Who are you mentoring? You are past 40, 45. You should be mentoring somebody. And God brings young people here. Pick somebody. Pour yourself into the person. Reproduce. Bring one soul every month. By the end of the year, you would have brought 12 souls. Not every week. Every month. One. Let's bow our heads to pray. Let's begin to ask that the life of God will come upon us afresh. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Oh, your name, well, hey, it's your name. Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. I want you to begin to pray. If you can pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. Just, Just begin to ask for a fullness of the Spirit of God once again. Breathe. Once again, once again. Ask that the Spirit of God will Just fill you afresh. More upon me, breathe. Your name is your name. Breathe, Lord. Speak in tongues, pray in the Spirit, and move around, begin to pray. Let there be vibrancy in the house. It's, we are not doing gentle prayer. You are here, you are not born again, and all that I'm saying looks very alien to you. Just raise up your hand where you are. Somebody will come to you and we take you out. You have not given your life to Christ. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Please look around and give them the cards. Hallelujah. You have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. With the evidence of speaking in tongues, you can come forward. Ministers will lay hands on you. 
so that you will experience this that we are experiencing. You have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Mashaka labels are come forward. You cannot speak in tongues. You have not experienced it before. It is alien to you. Hey, Mashandara Bose Kataraba. Ministers will come, they will speak, they will breathe upon your life, and you begin to speak in tongues. Oh, everybody here is baptized in the Holy Spirit. Mashandara Bose Kataraba. If you are not, please wait behind. Holy Spirit is our companion. You cannot afford not to have the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And so everlasting Father, we thank you. King of glory, we worship you. We thank you for that which you have done in our lives. We thank you for that life that is in us. We pray for as many that are in the state of unconsciousness spiritually that your spirit will wake them up this morning in the name of Jesus. As many that are stagnant, as many that are stunted, let your spirit take them over. Let us begin to grow because when we don't grow, we die. We don't want to die. We want to grow to know you better. Father, please help us to continue to know you in the name of Jesus. Thank you everlasting Father for in Jesus mighty name we are prayed. We believe that you have been blessed by this message. We'll be glad to have you worship with us every Sunday at 8am and every Wednesday at 6pm. God bless you.